I went in hospital to visit a man dying that I'd been requested to visit. And walking out of that room and going down the hall, the corridor, I heard a fellow say, Preacher Rawlings, rough, vo uh, uh, gruff voice. And so, man, somebody's calling me. I looked back. I thought it might be some people from the room where I just visited. I was down near the other end of the corridor, but then I heard it again. So I turned and walked back. And I passed the fourth door up here, and there's this big dude in there. I'll call him Joe. That's not his name. Hey, preacher, I saw you go by. How you doing? He's sitting on the edge of the bed. He can't walk. Oh, I said, I'm doing fine. I said, what, are you trying to die? I said, nearly everybody goes to the hospital dies. I was trying to help him out. So we, I said, you need to get out of here, man. He said, I'd like to, but I can't. So we started talking. And I had the MasterCard. And dear landmark people, you ought to get this. What does the Bible say to me? Where will I be five minutes after death? I said, Joe, don't stop on that one. You'll be in hell anyway. No need to worry about that. Just go back and read that other one. What does the Bible say to me? I said, read number one. I need to be saved. And he's a member of, an, of, a, of another religion. So he went right on down. We well, got through... John 3, 16, Jesus has provided for my salvation. And he started breaking down. It's an amazing thing. And folks, the next one said, now is the time to be saved. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Then number five, who must I talk to? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And old big Joe said, I understand that. I said, now you don't go through the kitchen to Mary, you just, or you don't go through the baptistry, you just go right to Jesus. He said, I understand that. And then only God answers my prayer. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me for Jesus' sake. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and give me peace with thee. Luke 18, verse 13. He had begun to wilt, to break down. I said, now we're going to, we're going, we're going to pray. And there was a man in the room with us, a friend. I didn't know it. He's a policeman. I said, maybe you need this. No, he said, I've been saved. I said, you're kidding. Where'd you get saved? And he told me about a little Baptist church out here. I said, well, that's generally where you get it. I said, all right, Joe, now we're going to pray. And your friend here, he's going to pray first, like scared that policeman to death. He never prayed publicly, evidently, but he... And he started looking around and telling the Lord what Joe needed. He said, I reckon Joe needs to be saved. Well, he didn't need to reckon about it. He knew it because he had, was married to Joe's niece. He knew how mean he was. And then I started praying, and I just stopped. I said, Joe, I'm going to quit. It's time for you to pray. Look at that number six. Only God answers my prayer, and you pray that prayer. And you know what Joe did? He shelled down and got the job done. I said, now, number seven said, God cannot lie. Now, God didn't lie to you. He said he'd save you. Did you lie to God? He said, nope. I meant every word of it. I said, okay, that's it. I said, all right, it's 20 minutes, 2 o'clock, February the 6th, 1991. That's when you got it. Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we went ahead. He told the little nurse about getting saved. So I visited him yesterday afternoon. You know what happened when I walked in that door? Listen, folks. You know what Joe said? 20 minutes to 2, February the 6th, 1991. I said, you got our brother. Amen. 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 Are you saved? Can you, can you talk like that? I got it. I got it. All right, that's the way it comes. And friend, there's only two places, heaven and hell. No halfway house. Heaven and hell. And you're going to decide where you want to go today. Heaven or hell. Where the worm dieth not and the blackness of darkness forever. Come on. Don't take the chance because there isn't any chance to take. 
He said, you're condemned already. And if you'll come and say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me and save me, he'll do it. Let's stand with our heads back.